Ladies and gentlemen, it's Friday night. We are now large and in charge here on the paranormal portal. You have made it to the weekend, and uh, Don's phone's still making noise. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> and I uh, hope you're having a great week, and thank you so much for sharing part of your precious weekend right here with us on the paranormal portal. And we got a great show lined up for you guys tonight. I guess first I should introduce my good friend and co-host, Mr. Don Longbeard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Rachel says, hey, Don, nice to see you're feeling better. Thanks. Yeah, it is I, good I, to have you back, yeah, man. feeling good, yeah. Yeah, that's bad. There's enough of that sick crap going around, man, I'm yeah, telling you. I got spanked by it a couple times so far between this last fall and, and this yeah. late winter. and. Yeah. Uh, and now you've had it a couple of times too, man. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I guess between the two of us, we should have a hell of an immune system. Yeah, right? we should. <laughs> I just, I just remember my mother always said, "Eat your onions and your garlic." Oh, yeah, yeah, that'll do it. And That's... here, take this shot of whiskey with honey, <laughs> and go to your room and <laughs> think about it. <laughs> more like, more like stew in it. <laughs> I understand how it works, um, but we we've got a lot going on tonight, ladies and gentlemen. But before I go any further, let me uh, please take a moment and thank uh, the Paranormal Portal sponsor, which is Cryptid Coin. Cryptid Coin. And if you're not familiar with Cryptid Coin, is ladies and gentlemen, it's a brand new cryptocurrency that has the heart of the cryptid research world at it, as its center, and and. <laughs> It is uh, uh, the scope and measure and plan uh, is to utilize a great percentage of the coin and keep it in trust, and it will be used to fund cryptid research around the world. And if you want to learn more about cryptid coin or how to qualify for a cryptid research grant, go to cryptidcoin.io. Again, cryptidcoin.io. And uh, also stay tuned for the, the forthcoming talk show, Cryptid Talk, which will be uh, we'll be breaking more news about that in the near future. So, uh, but check out Cryptid Coin and a special thank you to them for sponsoring the Paranormal Portal. Absolutely. So, uh, I guess we should probably, without further ado, get at this because we've got a whole host of uh, of friends joining us tonight here on the show. And uh, who I'm talking about? Who am I talking about? Well, I'll tell you what, we're talking about Mr. Eric Mintel, Mr. Dominic Sattel, and of course, uh, Eric Spinner is also here too. So welcome, guys. 
Thanks for having us. All at once. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for having us, Brent. As Uh, always, man, it's great to be here. It's great to have you back. And uh, thanks uh, to all of you. And, And Eric, welcome to the show. This is your first appearance on here, huh? Uh oh, his mute's still on. Oh, here's <laughs> oh, wait. I was being respectful. I said thank you and, and thanks for having me. I got I got it telekinetically there. I, I think I got first, the telepathy. Hey, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> that only works on Art Bell. <laughs> you can't sweet talk me like that. He said a lot more than that, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. But welcome to the show, guys. And, and you're joining us tonight to talk about the Pine Barrens. And you had already been on uh, recently to talk about your, your experience over on Bray Road. And uh, yeah. I know you. Bray you, Road. That's Beast of Bray Road. Beast of Bray is. Road. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys had a hell of a journey over there. And and so what what prompted the uh, the, the whole mission to the Pine Barrens? Of course, we all know, uh, those of us in the paranormal world, we know about the the uh, the the Jersey devil, which is rumored to be there, but I don't think a lot of people know that it's also a Bigfoot hotspot over there. huh? It is. And I'll, I'll start it off by just real quick saying that, uh, Eric and I, uh, Eric is doing a lot of really great research in the pine barrens for many, many years, uh, a lot of different hotspots. And, uh, I had had the pleasure of having him on my interview show, Mm. Uh, in uh, Princeton Television, which is now Central New Jersey Network. But oh, cool. uh, we had Eric on, very impressed with all of his research, the castings that he got, the hair samples. So we conducted an investigation in July of 2020, like right in the middle of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And we were in the Pine Barrens during the day. And Eric took us over to some areas that, you know, have had some activity. So fast forward You know, we said, well, look, we've got to do a follow-up on this investigation. So uh, fast forward to October 11th of last year, and it was me, Dominic, and Eric, and uh, and Eric's uh, research partner, Art Mack. And in the the, uh, place called The Bowl, new place that uh, they found and have had a lot of activity. And uh, that's when we actually encountered something that night, as soon as we got out there. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah and, and five and you're minutes. welcome about that. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know, Dominic, Dom, I got to tell you, man, I, and I want to give a shout out to Don, your partner there, too. Hey, well, I was never, we never say hi to Don, but hi, Don. How you doing, man? Um, <laughs> hey, so, uh, so Dominic is a medium. He's a spirit medium. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's, he's looked for Bigfoot and, and different creatures with me. But this and the Beast of Bray Road, that was completely out of his wheelhouse. So I'm, I'm dragging him around to different areas, <laughs> and it was when Dominic and Art were having a conversation, that's when it happened. Oh. Yep. And, and what, what was it exactly that happened? Go ahead, Dom. Well, and well, Art and I were talking, and as we're talking, I'm asking him about different questions about how they investigate and what they do, and all of a sudden, Eric's like, did you hear that? And I was like, what do you, what, I missed it. And then all of a sudden, I heard it. And it was a whoop. And, and it was a really distinctive whoop. So that was intense. I, I've never heard that before. That's yeah, so we had to cut our interview short. <laughs> and so then uh, I had my wife Heather respond to it. And she did a gentle whoop. And we were getting like a little bit of a back and forth going on. And we actually did hear it moving away from us. And then Dominic thought he heard something uh, rustling behind, like uh, maybe Mama Squatch coming to, you know, check out, make sure everything was okay with the uh, juvenile. Yep. Wow. So with with that, um, I do have to say that when we started the investigation, we were about five miles, I would say, right, Eric? About five miles into the Pine Barrens uh, on, by truck and basically went in about 600 feet into the woods to set up base camp. So prior to all of this happening, you know, Eric's showing us his protocols on what they do and how they do the research, which I thought was amazing because a lot of people don't know the inner workings. You know, they see a lot of stuff on television and, and things like that, but uh, to actually be there on site and to see what he's doing for this research was really, really incredible. And infrared, you know, and and the microphones. Well, he had these high-powered microphones going 
at the same time we were doing the the interview with Art, well, those microphones picked up the sound a, a lot louder than our little lavaliers did, wow. and it was amazing, man. And uh, and that's on our vi our video called uh, Pine Barrens Bigfoot, and people could hear that. I mean, we had a lot of different activity. I had we had to leave earlier that night, uh, but Eric stayed la uh, later uh, that night. I think they had more activity when we left, so it was, it was a pretty amazing night. So, so Eric, you've been researching this area for quite a while. Oh yeah, I've been doing research since about 2006, 2007, and I'm an investigator. I'm also an organizer. I, I take people out on expeditions, and uh, I've had uh, numerous activity, not only in the Pine Barrens, but up in New York, Pennsylvania, Missouri, and uh, British Columbia was actually where I, I saw my first uh, Sasquatch. Wow. Wow, right. That's that's amazing. You know, I knew there was quite a bit of activity over there. I just didn't know to what degree. I mean, because mm -hmm. I, I think everybody's mm -hmm. in the in our community is pretty well versed in the fact that, of course, Sasquatch is a national and international phenomena. And uh, but you always wonder what kind of dispersal are we working with? You know, I mean, are there huge populations? Are there small pockets? Is you know what exactly is going on? But. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of stories coming out of the Pine Barrens, and I, I think that that really takes a lot of people by surprise because when you think of New Jersey, you're thinking, you know, metro areas and, and towns and stuff. I don't think people have a real clear idea of, of the expanse that is the Pine Barrens. Sure. Well, you usually think Sopranos, you know, North Jersey and all the uh, pollution and the oil refineries. But down by me, it's it's an amazing expanse of 1.2 million acres of nothing but forest. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's plenty of real estate for them to hook up with. That's Tons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And I've, I've had activity. I had a, a Class A road crossing coming back from one of my areas 12 years ago. I was with a Jersey Devil research friend of mine. Oh, and wow. on our way back, it was actually... Uh, St. Patrick's night, we went out instead of going out getting, you know, <laughs> drunk, <laughs> we went out to seek the elusive Sasquatch and the Jersey Devil. Uh -huh. And on the way back, we actually had a road crossing. And I'll tell you what, I came within three feet of uh, hitting this individual. And, you know, I, I slammed on my brakes. She slid forward. The water, that bottle that she had between her legs sprayed all over. And she says, what the F was that? And I went, deer she goes no it wasn't <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> i knew it wasn't a deer because it was running on two legs hunched over with its arms propelling it mm -hmm. about 35 miles an hour mm -hmm. i mean literally it it didn't stop running but it kind of turned as it was in front of the vehicle and, and like as if to say oh shit you know like wow. it messed up sure. but it kept going right across and and continued in about you know through one more uh, yard it was on a high tension pole line which is like a Sasquatch highway, you know, yeah, and sure. takes it deeper into the Wharton State Forest. Now, how big would you say it was, Eric? Well, hunched over, all right, it, and I was driving a car back then, it was three and a half feet <clears throat> higher than my hood. So okay. I would say guesstimate about six and a half, seven feet. So you think it was probably a juvenile or, or do you? Uh, a younger one or, or a female maybe. And I, I okay. feel it was probably, uh, you know, uh, an opportunist and it was probably dumpster diving or taking advantage of food that might have been left uh, at this development where it came tearing out of it. literally oh. came down a trail mm -hmm. with chain link fence on both sides and it had a clear path right across the street through the next yard into the, the pole line. Wow. And we, uh, when we did the investigation during the day, Eric took me to that exact site, and we got it all on, on video on that on that particular uh, investigation. And you can see there's this trail that goes right down into the development, but it also goes right out to the woods. Wow! So oh. it's there. Something was there, and I mean, it even didn't even have like a big tree or something that was like blocking the entrance, like something. Afterwards, afterwards, yeah. there was yeah. a tree that blocks the entrance and i'm thinking maybe the development maybe put it there to either prevent you know bigfoots from running through or maybe to keep people from driving in i don't know but i i left out the part that the next night one of my customers daughter-in-laws had the exact same situation happen to her and then a year later another woman going to work in the opposite direction had a road crossing at the same exact spot so eric and i always joke around hey we should just set up a trail camera here you know and stake <laughs> yeah. it out <laughs> Yeah. Well, and that was my my thought was maybe they're going into, and you thought of this too, Eric, you know, maybe, you know, you guys have heard of this, that they're going into these developments, they were going in, taking the garbage, you know, out of people and taking it back out of the woods, you know, looking for, you know, food source. 
Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I thought maybe that could be one of the things. Um, but, you know, that's that's what – and we've been experiencing that. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, reports about that. I know Eric has about a lot of road crossings now. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, they're getting to be a bigger population. Mm-hmm. I mean, Eric is going out into these locations, and he's getting – I mean, there's he's finding tracks all the time. I mean, in the middle – dead of winter, I don't think anybody's going to be out there in bare feet. And these <laughs> these tracks are incredible. So, you know, I always say that there's people that are connected to this kind of like phenomena too. You know, uh, like Dominic is connected to the spirit world. Eric is connected to the cryptid world. You know, um, we had a discussion the other night, which was you know we were talking about Bigfoots and UFOs. You know that connection. You know, Eric's not there yet, although Dominic and I are are coming from that that avenue. But we were talking about you know not to get off subject here, but we were talking about you know a lot of the uh, the paranormal alien. parallels. Yeah, paranormal <laughs> yeah. parallels, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're talking about alien abductions. We were saying, why wouldn't the aliens be abducting Bigfoot? Yep. You know, because you see, you see a lot of the, if you're seeing that connection of the Bigfoot and UFO, where the UFO is dropping, you see a Bigfoot coming out of the UFO, could, it, could they have possibly been abducted and, sure. and tested? And so that's that was one, a, of the, one of the theories that Art had mentioned when you and I were discussing it right. the other night. Art, and then and Brian then brought it up point. on our podcast. Yeah. yeah. I think that's and, a strong possibility. That that makes perfect sense. In fact, I, I interviewed a person who had, well, she wasn't sure if she had a dream or if it was real, but uh, she had an abduction scenario. And I, I'm pretty sure it probably pretty ha- uh, pretty much happened, but she had she said that to, when she... She, she was in a, a, like a room, an unremarkable room, where these, these aliens were, and they were looking at her, but then she was kind of sat up a bit, and she looked over across the room was another table, and on there sat a huge Sasquatch. And she said when she looked into its eyes, she could feel the intelligence and the warmth and the, and the, you know, the, the fact that this, this creature was you know, in the same position she was in. So I think wow. I think there's merit to that. I think it stands to reason. I mean, they they core the the cows all the time. So <laughs> I met. <imagine. Yeah. laughs> that's true, man. And that's true. And that's been a lot. A lot more of that's been happening too, which is yeah. you know, yeah, all all, oh, all over the, all over the country. Yeah, it's huge. Mm-hmm. And Dominic, how did you feel? Like when you heard that yeah. that night. <laughs> well, like I said to you, when we were out at the Beast of Bray Road and out in Wisconsin and. I felt safer in the Pine Barrens than I did out there. Mm. I didn't think we were in any really harm's way, um, but definitely there was movement. There was stuff going on. And just, you know, looking back on it now, it was definitely a mother or something protecting its child. And, you know, and that, that was, that was the big thing that really got us was that. And, you know, when Eric and I were sitting there, um, Mintel and, Eric Spinner and Art were out and they were investigating, you know, I said to Eric, I'm like, there's something behind us and it's watching us and I could feel it Mm -hmm. and, you know, not just feel it, but I could, you know, mentally and physically feel it and knew that we weren't in a good area, but Mm -hmm. I still didn't feel like it was danger at that point. So, you know, I said to Eric, I think we should really go. (laughs) So, (laughs) and that was, that was the whole thing. Yeah, but, yeah, and I, I felt I felt the same way. I mean, Brent, when you're in this area, it's com- first of all, it's completely pitch black. Mm-hmm. You can't see your fa- your hand in front of your face. So of course we had you know night vision camera going, uh, but a lot of times, Eric, you do these investigations with no video. You're just doing audio, and you're sitting in the dark. Well, we uh, we do record a lot of audio, but we have the thermal images now that have uh, recording capability. So as I showed you the other night, I took a picture of one up in New York, I think. I mean, something we got on, on therm. That was, so. that was amazing. Yeah. That really and, is. Yeah, Brad, there's also a phenomenon going on, and I'm sure some of your listeners will, uh, will you know, um, be familiar with this as well. There's this this phenomena that these guys have been seeing, and we di- I didn't see it that night, but I think Art, or I, you might have, Dominic, I, I think, there's a, a red pinpoint of light, and I know Eric's seen it a lot, and on other lights in the woods, so mm-hmm. there's this red point of light uh, that's been seen that's accompanying these Bigfoot 
uh, you know, reports and sightings. Yeah, Not no just sight. red. I mean, oh. as I mentioned on my expedition with Nathan in uh, Pennsylvania in October, um, or September rather, I saw the headlamp looking thing that, that I told you brought me closer to, you know, crossing over to the, the dark side with the whole paranormal thing because yeah. I have never experienced this in all my years doing this where it looked like a a, a, a real bright headlamp, not tiny. I mean, it was sure. big. In fact, when I go out my door, there's lights that shine through the trees and it, it has like the same exact type of look. I get PTSD now every time I walk out my door. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was about eight feet high up in the air. I told you, 15 to 20 feet away. And I'm looking at it. I'm swaying to see if it's a plane or a star, you know what I mean? Or a trail runner because we weren't far from the AT. And then I would say probably 20 to 30 seconds after that, it just went slowly down and wow. went out. I was, I was blown away. That is such a weird phenomenon. That comes up a lot to people talking about seeing these orbs and that it, it's in the same it, it's in the same areas as people are, are having these experiences with Sasquatch. And I and I wonder about that. I, I don't know if they're one and the same, but there definitely seems to be a, a, a correlation. A correlation, yeah. 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 yeah, it's very strange. Very strange. Huh. But Brent, I'm I'm not one of these like I was always a flesh and blood believer. Okay. Sure. So uh -huh. for me personally, I I respect other people's opinions and ideas and I don't put anybody down for what they think. Mm -hmm. However, I don't always prescribe to those beliefs. Right. And for me, it, it it took a long time for me to even consider the possibility of this other, you know, what we call woo. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now we have coined a new phrase, paranormal parallels, which sounds a lot better. And we experienced that when Art, when Art and I took uh, Eric and Dominic out to the bowl that night. We it was us. strange, strange <laughs> things. Yeah, I'm sure it was Dominic. I'm telling you, he brought that stick with him or something. I don't know. But I'll tell you what, the uh, radio started scanning channels out of the blue, yeah. and you know they yeah. were seeing some flashes. I didn't see any flashes that night. Um, but, you know, we've had some strange activity. Right before I brought them out, I had a different group out there, and I said, hey, it'd be nice to have a tree get pushed over. And five minutes later, from behind the guy holding my stick mic with the powerful microphones on it, the Kimbro Audio, mm -hmm. um, let me tell you, five minutes later, a tree got pushed over, and I was like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, be careful what you wish for, huh? <laughs> we ask for that all the time, though. <laughs> you know, we and you know the thing is, I had same thing with Dominic. I felt like a uh, a sense of security when we were in, in the Pine Barrens. Of course, you know, Pine Barrens is millions and millions of acres. But when we were there, because I, you know, I, you you have to have a level of trust with the person that you're there with, you know. And Eric, uh, you know, has been doing this so long. And so I felt much safer there than I did when I was when we were in Wisconsin. But, yep. but the uh, I'll tell you, man, the activity there—it's fascinating. And the mm -hmm. trail cam—I think there's some there. He's getting all these weird pictures and the castings and the footprints. So there, it warrants more investigation. Let's put it that way. So I think we're going to try to uh, we're going to try to do another follow up with that uh, when it gets a little warmer. This is this is yeah. one of the casts we got from the Pine Barrens. I don't know if you can see it okay or not. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Technology, but uh, this was from an expedition I did back in 2015, and uh, yeah, it was pretty cool to get actual casts you How know, long that we is could that? do a tri casting demo with. Sure. And it's about the same size as the Patterson Gimlin. This is a, a recast from the Patterson Gimlin. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. And uh, got this one from Cliff Barrickman in the Ohio Bigfoot conference. And if you notice the same dents, you know, the same oh, thickness, sure. yep. almost the same exact length. I only got four toes, one, two, three, four. I missed the big toe because okay. of the way the individual sure. was kind of crouched down by the bridge where uh -huh. we found them by the Creek. Um, but it's almost an identical, no, no transverse arch. It, you actually see the mid tarsal break. You know what I mean? Wow. So yeah. it's pretty cool to get this in the pine barrens. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, you know, it, it, with tracks, it's real tough because, of course, it all depends on the strata and stuff. But uh, that's awesome. I was going to ask you that, Eric, if you ever got tracks or castings. So I'm, I'm thrilled that you're, that you're grabbing that material as well. And, and then across the creek, Brent, from where we found those two, we have another big one that was a lot deeper because she slid when she came down the embankment Ooh. to avoid detection. Uh -huh. We got 18 juvenile tracks. Oh, wow. 
that 18 awesome. track impressions, I should say. I only cast five of them. <laughs> <laughs> what what you time can... of year did you ca did you find these? Uh, this was again in September. September. Um, okay. Yeah. So it wasn't necessarily during barefoot season, then, is what I'm saying. <laughs> no, and it had rained all night. That's the other uh, thing, which lends credence to these being not human but Bigfoot tracks. Sure. The reason I say that, it rained hard all night, and we had trail cameras down on the other side of the bridge where people would you know, normally put in their kayaks or canoes. Mm -hmm. um, there was no activity of any human kind, and these were found in the morning early. Um, and so, yeah, it was still raining when I went and actually cast them wow so. yeah those are great finds i i think that's that's phenomenal yeah. and it certainly substantiates you know you get the anecdotal uh you know uh, sightings and stuff and they're they're of course valuable but when you can back that up with with actual cast tracks and stuff i think that certainly uh solidifies the phenomena for that area so much more but you know and eric mentioned we find a lot of tracks honestly we find some potential tracks in sure. the in the pine barrens i have to say the sandy soil we call it sugar sand mm -hmm. very difficult to get uh cast that are or, or impressions i should say that are worth casting mm -hmm. so i have found a number of of impressions over the years but not as many as you would think and here i, I really feel it's because they're pretty intelligent creatures they don't want to leave a lot of, you know, yeah. evidence of them coming through. I did find some tracks in the snow once on Thanksgiving about 10 or 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was out on a solo hike, and I got growled at five times by something I couldn't see. Oof. I should have at that point thought, oh, man, maybe interdimensional, <laughs> right? But I wasn't definitely not ready to go there. Yeah. But five times. The first time, I had just done three knocks with a child's baseball bat on a tree. Mm -hmm. And it came from the back, from my right-hand side, so loud that it vibrated my right ear. And oh. I turned it and went, Oof. Oh, and it growled at me again, and I went, well, and I got another growl. Man. And at this point, I'm saying, well, wait a minute, you're only you're about three miles from your car with just a child's <laughs> baseball bat in your hand. So I said, hello, how are you? <laughs> and I said, hmm, does this mean you don't want me here? <laughs> Well, I tell you what, we want you here, and uh, we're going to go to our first break in just a couple seconds here. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will return for the second half hour with the the all three of these gentlemen and continue finding out more about the the Pine Barrens and what they've seen and experienced and so much more. So don't go away. Lots more of the portal coming up. And uh, then on the second hour, we're going to get into some of the some of the stories you've come to love here on the show. So we'll be right back in just a couple minutes.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, back at it with half hour number two here on tonight's show. And, uh, of course, we are joined tonight by the Bucks County Paranormal Investigations team, along with Mr. Eric Spinner. And uh, we are having a great discussion about their experiences in the Pine Barrens. And, ladies and gentlemen, you ever seen, like, what happens when you put three kids in a, in a room full of toys? That's 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 what Skype is like during our breaks. <laughs> you wouldn't believe. I was going to say you can probably see us, you know, messing around while, while we're so, in a commercial. <laughs> yeah, I'm next time I'm bringing popcorn and I'm just going to kick back and watch you guys. <laughs> just unbelievable. That's, that's one one of the one of the things you got to have as researchers. You got to have fun. <laughs> And we do. We we are having a blast doing our podcast, and and oh, Eric's yeah. had me on his for you know a couple of times, and uh, we got the pleasure of having him on our Squatch our Squatch Talks podcast. Actually, oh. it's going to air tomorrow night at eight on YouTube. Shameless self promotion. Yeah, sorry. Absolutely no, by all but, means, uh, absolutely. But yeah, Eric is a great guest. Shut your Skype off right now. <laughs> I'll mute myself. Sorry, now. we got uh, having connections issues with Eric. We'll uh, yeah, try to get him back. <laughs> Wait, I can't hear Eric all of a sudden. What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he's, he's lost microphone privileges for the rest of the visit, so uh, we'll just have to get the rest of the story from <laughs> Mintel and Dom. Um, oh, my God. And, Brent, that's what makes this, that's what makes the research that much more enjoyable, too. Sure. Look, you know, the thing is, yes, we, we could joke around, but... When we get out in the field, that's the whole thing. Yeah. We're out in the field. We are absolutely physically in the field. Yeah. And when we're out there, it's like game. That's a game changer. It's like complete seriousness. Um, yeah. When Eric's doing tree knocks, when we're, we're listening for certain things, you've got to have a whole nother uh, headspace. You know, when 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 dealing with that, because, uh, you know, he was dead. You know, you see a lot of people, you know, on the TV shows doing tree knocks and things like that. Everybody's got their own technique. But there is a there is a science to this because you've got once you do the knock, you have to remain completely quiet. Sure. Yeah. To hear what's what's going to be returned, hopefully, you know. And, yeah, and and when we were out there, not to interrupt, but when we were out there with Eric and he was going through and he's like, we don't use, you know, we use the headlamp, we use the red light mm -hmm. because the white light will blind you and it gives you basically spots with the red light. It's easier on the eyes. It's, it's little things that Eric yeah. and I didn't know when we first went out with Eric Spinner and he taught us, you know, this is how we do a knock. This is the reason why. Cool. This is how we look for prints, mm -hmm. and this is the reason why. And it was it was really educational as well. And and we learned you know things about it now that we're going to use when we go and do our next investigation out at the Beast of Bray Road. So uh, you know, thank you, Eric. Well, I mean, you really you and Art were awesome. The red lamps, the red headlamps we use is not only to help preserve our night vision but also if you use white lights out there you're going to scare anything out of you know oh sure. just gonna yep. it's going to really cut the activity quite fast so the best defense against the bigfoot you know i go out with my kimber pepper spray i don't carry you know firearms or anything but um the best defense against the bigfoot is a bright flashlight <laughs> oh, <laughs> tactical yeah. light yeah, yeah, I know. I've heard, I've heard a lot of people say that pisses them off in a hurry. Like they, they, they hate the white light. Yeah, yeah. But now, um, wouldn't you say though that uh, oftentimes, th well, I mean, every time I think these these beings choose when they're when they're going to have an interaction or not. I mean, we're not going to surprise them. We're gonna we're not going to be sneaking up on these things. They're going to choose whether or not they're going to make themselves known. Um, and and it's sometimes. Some of the most unassuming uh, activities seem to bring them in, like they are such a curious and intelligent being, right? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, and and actually that's quite true, Brent. Mm -hmm. um, and we we've been trying some other techniques where in the past we used to go out and sit quietly and just listen, and then we started doing like some provocations, some knocks or some gentle whoops or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife and I, who was my girlfriend back at the time 
you know, she and I had some research techniques that also brought them in from time to time. Uh -huh. um, you know, that uh, <laughs> one time we got growled at again, and she says, that's it, I'm out of here. She got in the truck and locked the door, and I went around the truck, and I said, hello, how are you? <laughs> Remember me? <laughs> yeah, and, and then I used to take my kids when they were little. I used to take them out and use them as bait as well because, you know, Squatch is definitely my like kids. <laughs> but Bigfoot loves the ladies, I got to say. So oh, we definitely sure. enjoy Natural. taking the women out and... Uh, you know, and, and I'm not trying to be graphic or anything, but if they are on their cycle, their monthly cycle, that, yeah. that may even enhance some uh, activity as well. Sure. I have to say, we had that at the bowl with Eric. Um, prior to that, we had some attendees. Patty, she was having a conversation for an hour, going back and forth, whooping with this, ju we call it a lovesick juvenile. Uh -huh. And I have all the audio from this. this. This is why I started to say earlier, the audio... As great as having thermal imaging and night vision cameras and all that is, mm -hmm. the chances of you getting a picture with a night vision camera are very slim, okay? Sure. But audio, I can guarantee you, I'll, I'll walk home with audio. If somebody doesn't step on it by making too much noise after our provocation, I'll walk home with some audio recordings that you can just go back and listen to over and over again and then analyze. It's the best, I have to say. Now, I think it's great to have a many tiered approach like that too, because you, you know, we don't know how they're going to choose to, to make themselves known, whether it's going to be a tree mm -hmm. knock or if it's going to be a growl or if it's, you know, and, and oftentimes I think that the more, the more methods you have in play, the better your odds are if you're going to get anything at all. But I, I think that. Yeah, they definitely do seem to like children and they do seem to, <laughs> I've heard stories, so many stories of them, you know, being so intrigued by ladies and, you know, especially if they're alone. <laughs> and I don't know if that's a good thing or not, because I, you know, of course you think of the first nations stories of how people right. would disappear and, and never come back. Yeah. And, you know, that's mm -hmm. the, that's the dark yeah, scary the, side. The, that, the, the strange thing is about this thing, why I think it's, there is some kind of like paranormal uh, parallel to this. When we were in uh, Wisconsin, for and just to veer off of that for a second, Lee Hample, the farm owner, I know you've talked to him, I oh, think, yeah. Yeah. Uh, talked to him as well. Yeah. You know, we saw he, hair samples that he had gotten, mm -hmm. and we, under the microscope, they were completely absent of the medulla. Mm -hmm. So it, it, they're translucent. So, And I liken this to like, you know, when, you, when you're looking at a field and, you know, there's deer in the field. Mm -hmm. And you can barely see the deer because they're just so blended in. Sure. You know, could this have some kind of, uh, some way of cloaking itself somehow? Mm -hmm. That it's, it could be like right next to you, but you just don't see it's there. Right. Well, you know, um, and that's the fascinating part about this whole thing. Um, you know, then you've also got reports of the, the red glowing eyes from, uh, yes. you know, from Bigfoot. Um, I know Stan Gordon had had, reports way back in uh, in the mid 70s where there was a lot of bigfoot uh, sightings accompanied with ufos uh and these bigfoots had red glowing eyes and uh that's a phenomena that's going on as well mm -hmm. um you know so again you know we leave a lot of these investigations that we go to we leave with more questions than we come back with answers but yeah. it's always but we're always putting those pieces of the puzzle together sure and that's that's what I love about what we're doing. And to be able to meet with Eric and Art and all of his team, Dominic, and the spirit mediums that we've worked with, it just adds so much more to all of our investigations because there, there is some real validity to, to what's going on. And, you know, look, everybody's open. Most people now are open-minded, given what we've gone through with this pandemic, too. You know, they're, and plus what the government is, uh, you know, declassifying with all the UFO footage, a lot of people are more open-minded to the to the possibility that Bigfoot does exist. It's a, it's a real flesh and blood creature. Mm -hmm. Have we identified it yet? No, but that's what, that's where we come in and guys like Eric and, and we're doing the research, telling the stories and hopefully someone else comes forward with a story of their own. That's never been told before. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fascinating. You know, I was going to say, uh, Eric, um, when you were talking about the road crossing, don't you find that fascinating? Because I think it, it boggles my mind, and, and I think that it must be, I mean, they must be doing it on purpose because 
there's no doubt when you're out in the in the country, you can hear a car coming over a mile away. And and no they, doubt. these things certainly would have no problem hiding, <clears throat> you know, I- even in plain sight. Yeah, they, they, I mean, yeah. they, they can just blend in. They don't even have to try. Right. But why? Yeah, you know, you make a great point about that because one of the things we had, you know, t- talked about was that maybe it's like a rite of passage almost yeah, like, where they have to, mm-hmm. you know, as, as a rite of initiation, they have to charge out in front of a speeding automobile and not get hit, you know? Right. But it's funny, when we were recreating my, uh, my, uh, road crossing on the finding Bigfoot thing. Uh, I said to Bobo, I said, Hey, you going to run out in front of my vehicle as I'm <laughs> going 55 miles an hour. And he says, that ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that takes, that takes all kinds of courage, I, I think, but, uh, they do it. They, they do run out when that obvious, obviously they're going to be seen and they time it just perfectly. Cause it's like, why couldn't you just wait two seconds? The car goes by and boom, you're free, but they and go behind them. Right. Yeah. When we talked to Jim King Bear oh, yeah. uh, of the Bigfoot Outlaws, he he has a similar theory. He thinks it's like it's counting, coup. counting coup. Yeah, like they have a counting coup where they, as you mentioned, a tribal idea that they, it's kind of like a rite of passage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I'll have to say, I mean, you made another good point earlier, though, about being in the right place at the right time. You just sure. never know when it's going to happen, and that is exactly the situation that night where we had been out in the Pine Barrens on a. You know, Bear Swamp, Hill Tower Road. I mean, just that name alone, it sounds like a good spot, right? But sure. I mean, yeah. no activity whatsoever. It was kind of misty and cold. So she and I said, okay, you know, pack it up. We're talking about, you know, music on the radio as we're coming back. And that's when this thing charged out in front of us. And again, <laughs> I think it was being an opportunist. And the reason it ran out the way it did is because it probably got scared by something in the development. Mm-hmm. Maybe a homeowner caught it, sure. you know, foraging through the, uh, or rummaging through the trash can or sure. taking food they left out for, an, you know, a wild animal or their own pets. Who knows? Mm-hmm. But it looked at us literally <laughs> as if it was like surprised that we were oh, there. Oh, okay. 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 That's interesting. And, and Dom, I want to ask you, since you're a psychic, um, did, there are a lot of people have alluded that there's definitely a psychic element to these creatures. Um, did you sense the presences in a different way or, or what was your reflection as a, as a sensitive to the presence of these beings? You know, when we were out there and I was talking with art and we heard the first whoop mm-hmm. and you, you knew just by the tone and the pitch that it wasn't an adult, was not an adult. Okay. Um, you know, I said to Eric, you know, I, I did feel something, but it was behind us. It wasn't in front of us. Sure. And I could feel the presence, but I, I really didn't get any animosity, any anger, any, sure. you know, anything like that that was negative. Mm-hmm. It was more a curiosity to see what we were going to do. And, you know, that's what I was feeling at the time. And I didn't, like, as I said before, you know, I didn't feel that we were in any danger. Right. Um. And, and, you know, I picked up the the infrared camera and, you know, Eric said to me that he's used it before and there hasn't been any infrared from them for heat signature. And when I was aiming it to where we were hearing the whoop and even behind us afterwards, I wasn't picking up anything on it either. Oh. So, you know, it, they're definitely some some kind of cloaking or something along those lines sure. that, you know, they can, they can, I don't know whether you want to say turn it on, turn it off, but there was nothing there, but I knew something was there. Mm-hmm. So it was different. It was very different. So you were able to still kind of dial in the presence. I, I, I just kind of am curious about that because it, if, oddly enough with the paranormal, what I've noticed uh, so many times is the overlap, you know, that there's so many overlaps between like cryptids and ghosts and UFOs and, and ghosts and, you know, everything there seems to be some some similar dynamics that go on with all of these phenomena, and it makes me wonder: are, are they are they truly? And, and I, I'm a flesh and blood kind of guy too, but I've been really entertaining the idea that these things are something different. Well, well, remember though, um, uh, Warren, uh, Lorraine Warren uh-huh. had that story oh, where sure. she was telepathically communicating with, with an injured with one. an injured one. Yep, yep. So let's yep. yeah. There is that it, too, yeah. Yeah, when 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 Eric and I were out in Wisconsin and we had baited an area to for the beast of Bray Road, and when we heard, you know, the howl, the scream that we heard, 
I said to Eric, we need to go. It's mm. it, we're in danger. Yeah. Um, and you know, that feeling that came over me that quick yeah. was not good. And, you know, I, and I knew we were not in a good area and we had to go. And, and Eric, you know, he knows when, when the look on my face, my disposition, everything was, we need to go now. Yeah. And we were on quads. So, yeah, pretty much, you know, we were ready to dive out of the way. <laughs> but we were on, we took quads back to the area. And I said to him, stay towards the middle of the field mm. because I was afraid there was a cornfield on the on our one side as we were riding out and i was just afraid this thing was going to reach out and just grab us oh sure and, and you know but and that's why i said when we were out in the pine barrens i didn't get that i didn't yeah. get that danger feeling i i knew that there was something there mm-hmm. and i knew we were being watched and you know i i expressed that to eric and 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 you know eric spinner and i was like they're there they're watching us they're they're kind of more interested in what we were doing and why we were there yeah. more than what you know why we were doing what we were doing they were just like well what are they and what are they doing and you know when eric and his wife went and started following the juvenile whooping at it it uh, and that thing moved pretty quick to get out of the way because i mean you heard it, it was real close to us and then the next thing you know it was distant 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 gone mm-hmm. and it was quick wow so well, we do have a question from our chat, and and this is from uh, one of our mods, Android Purity. Says, "What do each of them believe the origin to be of Sasquatch? Biological, spiritual, or interdimensional? Or aren't they sure yet?" And if each of you could take a turn, Eric Mintel, do you want to start? Yeah, um, I mean, I think they're biological. Okay, uh, sure, I think they're biological. Okay, and and next. Um. Um, uh, and and I, I think the same thing. I think they're biological. You know, I, and my patch on my arm here, you know, it shows Sasquatch <laughs> with the, with the, the you know, yeah. the UFO. And I, I honestly think that, it, you know, aliens are interested in them as just like they are with us. Okay. I don't think it's, you know, that they're depositing them and that they're spreading them out. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that they're looking at them as research just like they do with us. So when, you know, when they... <clears throat> When they abduct us, they all, they'll abduct them as well, just sure. to, to diagnose and see what's going on. But definitely biological. I don't think they're alien of any kind. Okay. And Eric Spinner, what do you got, sir? Well, hey, I uh, I happen to believe they come in a, in a orb through a portal, okay? And uh, after they uh, take the ferry to the... Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> I just, you know, I can't agree with these guys. They both say they weren't afraid in the Pine Barrens. I mean, um, that every time we're on, oh, I wasn't scared in Pine Barrens. <laughs> I'm going to take you out again, buddy, okay? Yeah. <laughs> we'll show you what it's take, really like. Take him, take him to the brown pants lair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing the pens. <laughs> guys, we're out there for an hour. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, we get home at 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, sometimes 6 a.m., and uh, right. <laughs> that's when it gets spooky. All right. You know, know in, uh, as in, far as the, uh, where, do the, where do the Sasquatch come from, they are, I again, I'm a flesh and blood guy with open mind, but uh, sure. we know they have infants. We know they have a gestation period. I found juvenile tracks. Mm-hmm. I found nesting areas where they could potentially be a, a nursery type area where the adults leave the you know the young mm-hmm. while they're out hunting or foraging. I've seen evidence of that. I have eyewitnesses who have seen you know adults carrying an infant. They throw them up on their back, kind of like a, a chimpanzee would sure. do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I happen to believe that they are descendants of a, uh, a hominid species mm-hmm. from some split in our line of genealogy somewhere. Mm-hmm. I personally had felt it was Gigantopithecus black eye who came over the Bering Straits during the last ice age, okay, with early humans. Mm-hmm. Uh, we recently talked to, um, what is it, uh, Tom... Casey, Tom Carey. Carey? Tom okay, Carey. he had was, a different uh, hominid. I was just, he, yeah, I was just gonna, I was gonna say, uh, blackest uh, rubundus yeah, or whatever. It's, uh, uh, he thinks Martin it's a, was, pro, uh, uh, yeah, he thinks it's a uh, uh, hominid, which has a sagittal crest like two, the gorillas do. They have, and it's a, uh, I think it was Paleo uh, uh, There was a mega uh, in there too. Proantho robustus. 
uh, which is basically what we're thinking is the missing link. Oh, and cool. uh, and that's what this creature that he believes it is. Now, Tom, Tom Carey, a lot of your listeners will probably know the name from his work in Roswell with the Roswell UFO crash. But he's also an anthropologist, which I was really surprised too. And he really knows his stuff about this. And he's been doing research more than I knew that about this. So, uh, and he came up with this, uh, like this creature. And again, yeah. you could see in in all of what uh, we were talking about in our video too. It's the Pine Barrens Bigfoot. And at the end of the video, we meet with Tom to get his take on what he thinks it is and, and what happened to us. Mm. Yeah, gy gypanicithic, gypanic gypanicithic robustus. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Well, gentlemen, an hour just isn't enough, but I'm I'm so thrilled you guys came on. Uh, I, I I would like you you guys to keep just take a couple minutes here while we got some time left and let us let our listeners know uh, how to keep in touch with what you guys are doing. Well, you could find us uh, Bucks County Paranormal Investigations on Facebook and YouTube at the same name. And uh, you, if you guys have Amazon Fire TV or uh, Roku or Amazon or uh, Android TV or Apple TV, mm -hmm. you can download uh, our shows um, on your device through Central New Jersey Network. Look for Bucks County Paranormal Investigations, Central New Jersey Network. Download that to your device. And you can see us every night, uh, Saturday night. It's uh, 11 o'clock. Okay. And, and, uh, and service electric. Service electric up in the Lehigh Valley, Lehigh Pennsylvania Valley. area. Okay. Yep. Very good. Very good. And Mr. Spinner, how do we keep hey. up with you, brother? Well, I'm pretty easy to find. If you Google Eric Spinner, I'll pop up under a lot of Bigfoot stuff, and I'm also a nutritionist, so I have that going. But uh, we are at Squatch Talks Podcast, and that's both for YouTube and Facebook. We're working on a, on a uh, website, but currently I have the nasbro.net, which NASBRO stands for North American Sasquatch Bigfoot Researchers Organization. And, of okay. course, you can also see my reports that I've had published on the BFRO's website at BF, BFRO.net. Um, cool. So, yeah, Squatch Talks is our newest project, and we're excited to have that going on, me and my uh, co-hosts. So tune in tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great stuff. And great, uh, Eric's Eric's a great researcher. Man. A little bit of a pain in the ass, but he's our. <laughs> <laughs> hey, because I tell you to keep quiet and not put your phone on after we get responses. <laughs> and, and honestly, and honestly, Mintel, he brings <laughs> snacks which you don't. That's Ooh. true. That's true, man. I know. I know. That's he I does. Got Jack Links, man. We're messing with Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got another question from the chat here before we're done. And, uh, we got three minutes left before the break, uh, before the end of the show, what are their thoughts on dog man slash wolf man? So, uh, same question for the Jersey devil. And, and, uh, yeah, if you have time, go ahead, Eric, go ahead, go ahead, Don. I was going to say, uh, the dog man, um, that's what we we're really investigating when we're sure. out in Wisconsin, at yes. East of Bright road. He's, he's really a dog man upright, uh, bipedal some kind of animal um and you know we if you find our video on youtube you'll see it and on facebook and we're going to go back out to reinvestigate and hopefully maybe trap this thing whatever it is Oof. um oh but God. you know we're gonna try but uh oh, you know lee hempel his farm he's he's had other sightings he just sent other pictures out where something's in the tree with a long tail um oh. and i mean yeah. it's it is freaky but, you know, definitely there's something there. Um, I'm going to say it's along the lines because it's a smaller footprint, definitely smaller footprint than a Bigfoot. So it's definitely a dog man of some tor some some type. Okay. But uh, there's there's definitely something out there. Okay. Uh, and the God knows what it is, but we're going to try and find it. Right, Eric? Exactly. <laughs> and we're going to be a little prepared this more prepared this time <laughs> rather than bringing uh, just a flashlight with us in the field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. flashlight and radio yeah, that's work. it gotta have a lot more <laughs> well i personally i'm learning about dog man still but i uh i've been watching actually your channel uh brent and oh, listening cool. to your interview with vic hunduff yeah um but you know as far as the jersey devil goes my my personal opinion is it's folklore that's been perpetuated over the years due to people having encounters with bigfoot like 
you know, individuals out in the forest. They see red glowing eyes and eight foot tall with broad shoulders. It looks maybe like wings screaming at them. And their mind wraps around that local legend. Okay. And up in northern New Jersey, it's big red eyes. So that's my belief. Well, fantastic. Well, gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, we'll have to make sure we get two full hours out of you next time, whatever, <laughs> whenever you come back on, because there's so much more to talk about. And I love just, I really love just batting around ideas and thoughts about this phenomenon because, you know, it's great to get the more minds together having these discussions and the more ideas come onto the table. But um, I, I just wish you all the best of luck and I hope you bring back some more evidence next time and, uh, you know, come back on the show and share it with us. Definitely. And, and Brent, let me just say thank you because I know you are doing a lot of work. Uh, I know sometimes health issues get you and I know <laughs> you're doing a lot of work there. So we thank you for, for allowing us to do and, to, you know, for our voices to be heard. And I know that goes for probably a lot of the researchers that, that you have on. Oh, and uh, so thank you for the, the format and you and Don for all your work. Hey, You're welcome. Our pleasure, yeah. gentlemen. And we'll be back you. in just a couple minutes. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on. And ladies and gentlemen in the audience, don't leave. We're not done yet.
make food which they cannot make. are usually associated with an individual. Hauntings seem to be connected with an area. A house, usually. Your guys' disturbance is of fairly short duration, perhaps a couple of months. Hauntings can go on for years. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our number two of the Paranormal Portal. And special thanks to uh, Eric Mintel and Dominic Sattel and uh, Eric Spinner for coming on and having that talk with us. It just went way too quick, though. Obviously, yes. there's so much more that we could talk about, and so we'll have to make sure that happens. Uh, but uh, it's, it was a great talk. I enjoyed that quite a bit. You know, and there's just always so much information when you have so many people on. Yeah. And it's like, wait a minute, I meant to ask, uh, but I got to ask, uh, but remember, we got to ask, you know, and so, uh, yeah, we definitely need to get them on again, or at least, and we need to get Brent, uh, Eric, I'm sorry, Eric Spinner, um, yeah, on for sure, definitely. Yeah, we'll definitely do podcast, some more, what, some more yeah. discussions with him yeah, on as the well. actual podcast. Yeah, well, <laughs> this, this first hour will turn into a podcast for sure. That was a great talk, you know. And I like to share that with our podcast listeners as well. But uh, Android says, what are your thoughts about them trapping dog, man? Your face, your face when they said it was priceless. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, wow. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm not sure that there's been a trap invented that I would trust to hold hold the dog, man. And, I, and Rachel uh, said, I hope uh, I hope that uh, release button's on her remote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, you, if, if, that's the kind of trap you don't want to get wrong. <laughs> yeah. Because if you get it wrong, there's all kinds of bad happening. Do not take, do not take trapping uh, lessons from mountain monsters <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or, or Fred from Scooby doo or <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's stay, let's stay above the board on that one. We're definitely not going to get trapping <laughs> ideas for mountain monsters because, uh, oh my goodness. there, those are hilarious though. That when they did the Mothman episode, <laughs> I didn't see that one. And they, and they built a big bug zapper. It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> they did the Mothman and they built a big, a big bug zapper light. It's like, Oh, oh my God. You can't write that. Well, no, apparently, well, you, apparently can. you can. You can. It's, it's very scripted. It's yeah, I'm sure it's very scripted. But Jesus, that's the trap they came up with. So I'm hoping that uh, Bucks County does a little more, yeah. a little more thought and insight into that than uh, yeah, just. Not. I mean, they'll, they'll, you can see Eric and Dom out there laying out a tarp and then some thick glue. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like glue just traps. laying out some thick glue and just yeah. go. Yeah, they, he's gonna get on here and fall down, and then we'll have him. No, oh, my um, goodness. yeah, I'm pretty sure they would. Apparently, there's a lot of people that thought of mountain monsters. When we... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that's. I mean, it's a noble idea because, of course, you could trap one. You could take it alive and and uh, substantiate it. And I don't know. Do you? It's one of those things, though. I, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of mixed feelings about this. Kind of like the produce a body thing. Right. Some th some things are better left to the unknown. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that might be one of them. I'm serious because what if what if? I mean, there's oh, so many movies. Agree. 
exactly like that. There's yeah. so many movies it's like, well, we found this at the bottom of the ocean, so we brought it up in this aquarium, and we're going to study it, and then it goes sideways. You know, yeah. I've I've seen those movies, and they don't end well. It's one of the Elder Gods. Yeah, yeah. It's, hey, we've caught this Cthulhu. <laughs> Cthulhu. All it says is Cthulhu. All it says. It's is like nothing. I am Groot. I am Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> it says nothing. It just looks at me and very mean. And people's brains melt. We're not sure what's going on. Exactly. But <laughs> things that shall not be named. Yeah. I, I mean that's like the plot line of every every horror movie. It's, you know. It's like, oh. So yeah, I think some things are better left in their own element. But hey, I mean, I don't I don't I, I'm not mocking them. I really am not. I, I think it's it's a, a fantastic idea, but I don't know how you could execute it without knowing what it is you're trapping. I, I just don't know how you could plan a, an effective trap. Now, if, if by trapping they mean that they just want to collect some genetic material, great. Like a little dart that would collect some tissue samples, perfect. Because right. that's substantiation, and, and that could very well go a long way. But if they're talking about, you know, we're going to bring it in a cage back to uh, Bucks County, then, <laughs> 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 then you better glad eat. We, glad we don't live anywhere near Bucks County. <laughs> you better you better pack a lunch is all yeah. I'm saying, because you're going to be at that all day long. And some Scooby snacks. Um, that's, yeah. <laughs> so, no, I don't mean to, the, to come off mocking with that at all. It's just one of those things I was like, yeah, you're going to what? Yeah. I was more, it was more an incredulous shock. Shock, uh, than anything you know they use this they use this spin trap to trap um like wild hogs wild boar in texas and, oh yeah it's like you know, a yeah and a it, dome it, thing. it hangs up here and then it spins down right? yeah it's and, like uh, pow right yeah, i wonder if one of those might work you know yeah to piss it off that would work <laughs> well you know you never know i mean well i so this is the here's the thing and, and i don't know exactly how strong dogman is but by all <laughs> accounts and measures they're they're in the same ballpark as, as bigfoot i mean they're they're in the close they're in the ballpark right. so they may not be anywhere quite as near as strong but I, you know, I don't know. It would have to be. How would you weight that down so it just couldn't go? Raw, and then, and then it can smell you and find you. You know. Well, you know, you'd have to build it obviously out of like you know iron, something a little heavier. <laughs> kryptonite. <steel>. Yeah, kryptonite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, smelly old shoes or something. I don't know. I don't know what works. <laughs> it might work. I don't know. But anyway, no. I think it's it's a noble noble idea. It's just one of those things that, man, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near that when no. that thing goes off. <laughs> I, I'll be watching it on Skype. That'd be about as close as I'd get. <laughs> just, I'd be watching just it on live Skype stream from forty thousand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How you doing? I would be Marlon Perkins up in the counter up in the helicopter yeah, there you go. as Jim wrestles the anaconda. All right. <laughs> I'm Marlon Perkins, and I'm going to be in the safety of the helicopter while Jim wrestles the anaconda. <laughs> it's like that's I'm Marlon Perkins on that deal. True, true born free, right? There. Mutual of Omaha, yeah. uh, <laughs> Wild Kingdom, a show. You probably none of you understand that reference, but <laughs> but some of you do, and you're laughing right now. I know you are. So I don't know. <laughs> that's like, that's like uh, Zach with Aaron. <laughs> yeah, it's like Aaron, go sit in there with this voodoo doll, and uh, we're gonna monitor you from the from the brain center. And then you know, Aaron goes in this room all by himself. He's got things flying, and Zach and them are down there making sandwiches. <laughs> let's, like, let's know if anything happens. Yeah. And hey guys, I think something's happening. Guys, Hold guys, guys, sec. guys, guys! Unlock the door. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. <laughs> Sorry, we turned the radio off. <laughs> oh, sorry, Aaron. It looks like our batteries went dead. <laughs> yeah, so that's exactly right. So I'm not going to be there, Aaron Goodwin. I'll tell you that. We're going to rub down with, down with no. peanut butter and put them in the dog man trap. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> peanut butter and bacon grease, Don. It's your new no. marinade for your beard. No, I'll, I'll stick with my sage and black pepper. Thank you very yeah, much. It's probably plenty tasty all by itself. <laughs> uh, I've recently started using Jarl's thistle as well. I bet you have. <laughs> <laughs> I was told I smell citrusy. <laughs> <laughs> no, they said you were fruity, Don. <laughs> I didn't say citrusy. That's, that's not what she said, but okay. <laughs> oh, who the hell knows? All right, welcome to the train wreck. That is the second hour. As we, as we get back into this, we're going to visit the article that we've worked through for a few shows now, and this is the truckers' stories and truckers' creepiest encounters, real life truckers' oh. and cre creepiest encounters. Oh, my baby. So, are you okay yeah, with I'm me? Good. All right, we're going to dive into this now. 
let's get to this article. So this is, again, coming from roughmaps.com. And uh, these are trucker stories. And some of them are long. Some of them are short. Some of them, like this one, are very short. Let's see what it says. Closed room mystery. I drove by a marsh every night when I was going home from work. One night, I saw a car pulled over with the hazards on. Dude was head to toe covered in blood. No crash, no injury, just covered in blood. Uh, that was by Biff McGee. Yeah, well, first of all, Biff, go back to the future. And <laughs> second of all, uh -huh. um, some dude out in nowhere with his hazards on covered in blood. Yeah. Don't stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Serial just, killer. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> call, call 911. Do your due diligence. Yeah. Tell them where you are. And hit the gas. Don't stop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just get out of there. Man, that's that's creepy. I don't know. I mean, it's not like he was just shaving quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. He sh shaved from the neck up. Yeah. <laughs> Number 36, The Great Unknown. My dad has several stories from hauling logs in Idaho nice. and driving trucks through Utah and Nevada. He once said there was a light keeping pace with him out in the desert on a moonless night. It kept pace with for a minute before it disappeared and his truck turned off. He pulled off at the next diner and the folks in there called it a common occurrence. Wow. That was by Ishvalan Warrior. Very cool. Um, those, those orbs, man, I'm telling you, mm. are they just orbs or are they something else? Maybe. Mm. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. All right. Number 37, mystery solved. <laughs> Thanks, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> yeah, Reggie. <laughs> uh, one time on a long distance drive, I started seeing white spots about a foot in diameter on the road, probably 30 to 40 over the span of a mile or so. And I couldn't quite figure out what they were, what they were. And eventually I came into a pickup truck with a large cage built onto the back. The dog man cage. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> it was Eric. <laughs> and pulled over on the side of the road, and that's when it all became clear. Uh -huh. The door to the cage was wide open, and it was completely empty. The man driving it was staring at the empty cage, just scratching his head. And the white spots were apparently just his lost, ch <laughs> his lost chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I thought we were going somewhere else <laughs> i hear a sale <laughs> somebody's having a sale oh, oh man. man those are his chickens white oh. spots were chickens those poor things they were just feathers <laughs> that's sad <laughs> that was by john voigt's buick okay number 38 aiding and abetting my great uncle was a long haul trucker and he swears that one time he was driving down the road only to see two guys pull a rolled up carpet out of the trunk of their car mm -hmm. and throw it in the river. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but it's still creepy one, nonetheless. One, once again, serial killer. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, or a really old carpet, one of the two. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> it's just, no, we just didn't like the color anymore. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's all red and stuff. So we put it in the river. <laughs> instead of in the dump it's in the river um there you go well whatever that was by jason Voorhees the 13th mm -hmm. <laughs> <Gee. laughs> i love these names number 39 losing it a few years ago i was driving back from georgia to arkansas the trip usually means i cross the northwest part of alabama where i normally take a wee nap at this one rest area one day I take my nap and go to the bathroom and get a Red Bull from the vending machine. I get back to my car at about 1.30 or 2 a.m. and start driving again. The highway was completely deserted except for me. I found it weird but shrugged it off. And the next thing I know, it's nearing 6 a.m. and the sun's coming up. My gas tank was near and empty. At the rest stop, I had a three-quarters of a tank. And my odometer shows I've driven like 250 miles, but my GPS showed I was only about 10 miles from the rest area. Ooh, I have no recollection of the time lost. It's wow. just gone. Wow. Yeah, that's a bad thing. Or it's a do-over. You got a do-over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's more like start again. Yeah, it's like the, the head starts blinking so, and you grab it. It's, it's free it's, life. It's like in, in school, you know, you got that one teacher that says, read everything on the page before you do anything. Oh, And, of yeah. course, you get all the way to the bottom. It says, sign the top right of this with your name and then hand it to the teacher. Ignore you know? all the previous instructions except, yeah. yeah. exactly. And, and then, all of it was like ripping, cutting, tearing, scribbling. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was the guy that did everything. 
every step all the way along there and then tried to cover it up at the end. I'm like, trying, no, I can't, <laughs> so, I can't make this look good. And all you guys that did everything else can start again. <laughs> and you knew the suckers because they got down the bottom. They go, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Just a, a collective groan in the classroom. You're, you're, you're wondering hmm. why kids are jumping up going, bark, bark. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> uh, exactly. 40 light up the sky. I was driving through a brush area with these weird rock walls. No plants or anything, just rock and sand. It was monsoon time, so I, it was raining cats and dogs just pouring so hard you could barely see going 20 miles per hour. Thunder and lightning just rocking the car and sometimes turning into hail and pounding you. Just a nasty storm. Well, I came around a corner, and it looked like the whole countryside was legitimately on fire, like 20-foot-tall flames, hundreds of yards in all directions while pouring rain at dusk. Just rocks and dirt wildly on fire in the pouring rain. I just slowly drove on. It was totally freaky and surreal. And honestly, I thought I may have hallucinated it, but then I found out the truth. He was in Arizona during storm season. I checked the news and discovered that a propane truck had slid off the road going way too fast and apparently busted open pretty violently and lit on fire. Never saw the truck. Must have been behind something. No, that's what's left of it. <laughs> if it's calling propane and it blew, that's it. Felt a bit bad after not stopping. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, in the middle of a firestorm. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, it doesn't I'm, matter how I got there. Just... <laughs> The user of that's who who wrote that one. That's how, how how unlucky would you have to be to be? You would have to have been right behind that propane truck, though. I don't know. Well, it's liquid propane when it's in there, though. So yeah, it's, it's liquefied. So it's it's, it's, it's LP. probably going to burn for a while. Yeah, it'll burn yeah. for a little while. Yeah. But you know, you lose a lot of evaporation and in flames. And, <laughs> yeah, especially in flames. Yes. Yeah, flames tends to eat them right up. Um, but yeah, that's crazy. I can't imagine how surreal that would look. Number 41, Ghost Town. I have one weird story from when I was a kid. My parents always took us on long road trips every summer, and my dad liked to take meandering routes through rural towns and to see all the touristy traps. One trip, we passed through a little town in Illinois, the kind you miss if you sneeze. This one had one bizarre feature, mannequins. Every house and business was only populated by mannequins. Oh. I don't remember seeing any people. Everything looked maintained and clean, so someone was at least caring for the place. There weren't any signs of anything indicating it was for tourists, just a convenience store, a bait shop, with the sign reading, Eat Here, Get Worms. <laughs> I wouldn't eat there. <laughs> uncooked pork, just yeah. for you. Ooh. Hey, let's try the uncooked pork swirl. <laughs> um, and you know, I was wondering I was wondering if there was like a sign out front of the town before you got in there yeah. that said, you know, nuclear testing facility. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Beware. What do the sirens mean, Dad? <laughs> get in the car, get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> no driving between, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so that was by oh my god spaghetti awesome oh hey uh eric uh eric spinner's in the uh chat and he's uh, from sasquatch talks podcast and says thanks again for having us on brent well oh. you're absolutely welcome sir it was a blast yeah brother we'll be in touch uh, i definitely uh think you and i should have some more talks too so uh if yeah. you don't mind um just uh if i'll, I'll get a hold of you i'm gonna message you and we'll, we'll figure out some time we can connect so very cool it was great talking to you though it was a lot of fun thank you um, let's go to the next one. 42 alarm bells ringing. I was cruising down highway 212 in the middle of the night in Southern Montana at about 2 AM. I'm pulling through the only town on the lonely stretch of highway. One stoplight town, and I get stopped at the only red light. <laughs> That's just bad luck. <laughs> Why even stop? <laughs> I know. Uh, I hadn't seen a vehicle on the road since I'd hopped off of I-90 Why at about stop? And an hour prior, and there wasn't a single person outside in the town. Sitting at the red light. What, a, what an honest person, though. <laughs> My God, really. Sitting at that red light, a loud siren starts sounding. Loud enough that I don't see how any person in the town or within a few miles could have slept through it. It reminded me of the siren from the movie Silent Hill. Whoops. Ooh, that's creepy. I gunned it through the red light <laughs> and away from that town as fast as my little four-cylinder Malibu would go. <laughs> it may not seem that crazy, but just imagine the most haunting sound you've ever heard in a place you've never been, several hours separated from seeing a person last. 
I'm sure there's an instant explanation for the siren. It just still sends chills down my spine just thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you just pooped yourself if there was, yeah. there was, it was you speeding off through that red light <coughs> was followed by red lights of your, their own <coughs> red and blues. Oh yeah, exactly. That's like, Oh, we got them with the siren. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's get them, Billy. Let's the crap out of it. Yeah. So yeah. what you doing? Drag racing? <laughs> yeah. Why are you going so fast to our town? <laughs> I believe that was a red light. <laughs> Yeah, it's just Respect entrapment. My it's, 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 yeah, it's that's how they gain revenue in that town. <laughs> no doubt, yeah. They have to pay the power bill for the red lights somehow. <laughs> Tell Eugene to hit the siren again. <laughs> we got a live one. <laughs> oh boy. Oh god. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, that's why I love this show. All right, number forty-three. A deal with the devil. My friend told me a story about riding with his father in the truck as a kid. They were in the middle of nowhere, and they were coming up on a person lying in the road with no one else around. Oh. No cars, etc. Well, his dad blew the horn. They didn't move, so he blew it again. And as he got closer, they still didn't move, so he did something horrific. Oh. He told my friend to put his head down and to cover his eyes, and he ran the person over. What? When they looked back, a bunch of people who were previously hiding were running out from the woods. Basically, his dad had suspected it was a setup for a robbery or worst and wasn't chancing it with his child in the car. I think about that story all the time. Right. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, that's a, it's a horrible position, but I'm sure his dad knew that that was not good, that that was just... And you hear about those stories all the time, that somebody, you know, will park their car kind of askew on the road and lay there right. and then person top are you okay okay and then the you know five or eight other people come out of the woods with guns right and they've got your vehicle and, and if it's a truck i mean imagine that's a big catch because it's full of something usually but and and those trucks are really expensive so um they might be worth something on the aftermarket too right yeah definitely but, strip them down yeah sell them off. so <laughs> i you know i it's it's terrifying to think of having to be in that position but if i had my kid with me you know yeah i gotta be honest what are you gonna do i mean i probably would have spe- veered off and hit all the people in the bushes <laughs> <laughs> you think you're funny <laughs> <laughs> hey i went to miss the body and look there was a bunch of people in the bushes i didn't know yeah i'd have hit the eight people in the bushes <laughs> trying to avoid that one body and i don't think he was dead number 44 a higher calling I was in the middle of absolutely nowhere in Texas and getting tired. Mm. There were absolutely no lights anywhere around me but the stars. And I guess I kind of messed up a turn at one of those forks in the road because out of nowhere, a calm voice came in quite loud over the CB. Driver, looks like it's time for you to pull over and grab some sleep. (laughs) So I did. I'm not ignoring invisible CB Jesus. (laughs) CB Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> CB Jesus tells you to sleep, you sleep. So it's by Win, win a Pig. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not ignoring invisible CB Jesus. That's awesome. <laughs> so, that's hilarious. I love that. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's a good story. I think I got time for this one more before the break, and this is number 45, One Wrong Move. I worked at a Nevada nuclear test site decommissioning old buildings, and one of the creepiest days was when I was sent with an end dump dump load of non-hazardous material to the landfill, which I'd never been to before. Well, somehow... I missed the turn and ended up in an armed gate with machine guns pointed at me. Oh, my God. Very uncomfortable. (laughs) Once I explained my mistake, I was quite hastily turned around, still not knowing exactly where my turn was. And I was looking for a very nondescript desert road. (laughs) What would you apparently found? Apparently, that one was more descript with the machine guns. (laughs) Uh, And I headed back. I turned on the next dirt road I came to and had to take a break. My hands were still shaking from the run-in with the armed guards. Yeah, I bet. That was by B.C. Sublime. Wow. That's pretty sketchy stuff, folks. <laughs> B.C. Sublime. Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere around C.B. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. C.B. Jesus. That's awesome. <laughs> that <was the> <laughs> All right. I don't <laughs> some farm farm says it gave him the CBGBs. <laughs> there you go. I'm just saying when CB Jesus talks, you listen. You don't ignore CB Jesus. That's awesome. Invisible CB Jesus. 
<laughs> I mean, that's the thing with those CBs. They got they got quite a range, but I mean, there's a limit. So usually, if you're talking to somebody, it's somebody within eyesight somewhere, in line of sight. But that'd be creepy to be in the pitch dark. <laughs> Whoever it is can see you veering on the road and go, "Nah, you need to get some sleep." Oh, oh man. <laughs> well. Hilarious. It is really hilarious <laughs> stuff. But, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming up to our last break of the night. Wow. It's the last break. So, you're still not excused, though, because we have one the more segment to go. Time. But uh, if anybody needs to call in and share a story of your own, 720 923 0500. Again, 720 923 0500 is the number to call in. If you have a story of your own to share, we'd love to hear from you. So. Oh my gosh, I didn't recognize that phone number for a second. I was like, What's the phone number? Like, what? what? It hasn't been that long, has it? <laughs> Actually, it kind of feels like. Don, it. How's, how are you feeling? <laughs> I feel okay. <laughs> you said you were better before you came here. <laughs> I think Don might still be a little sick. Yeah, but. Well, that's, that was a lifelong <laughs> thing, though. Yeah, there's some things you just can't cure. But. Right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, buckle up. We're going to go to the last break here, and uh, then we'll be right back we at it. We shall return. We shall, because Keep we promises i promise and remember tomorrow night ladies and gentlemen miss deb varner is coming Varner. she's going to be here on the show and we're going to do free psychic readings to callers to the show so if you call in call in early and hold the line i'm just going to say because you never know but we will get to all the callers tomorrow night and we'll be back in just a couple minutes for the last segment of the show don't go away
Thought I'd try darking around for the camera too. How how did how did I do? <laughs> I, I was doing dorky stuff, Don. Oh, I didn't even realize. I was having fun, but right. uh, Tracy Gill said, "Hey, Deb was so accurate when she spoke to me the last time it came to pass. Uh, just like she said, I meant to email you about it. That oh, is wow. so cool. Very cool. Yeah. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow night, of course, uh, Deborah Varner, our very own paranormal portal psychic." We'll be on the show here to do free readings to those of you that choose to call in. So the same number that you've come to love for their other shows will be used tomorrow night to get in touch with Deb. So if you want a free psychic reading, a little idea of what could be coming up for you in 2022, then uh, call 720-923-0500 tomorrow night at 7 p.m. through 9 p.m. And uh, I'm sure she'll probably be willing to do some overtime if we get a little long on the show, so we'll do overtime on YouTube if it goes long, but that'll be tomorrow night here on the Paranormal Portal, so an epic show to be sure. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Brooks, uh, Brooks had um, uh, a similar experience uh, with uh, accuracy with Deb. Yeah. Um, Deb's incredible. She's been with us for... Oh, God. Yeah. About as long as you have, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just about as long as Don's been up, with the show. Coming up on five years. Wow. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's hard to believe. Yeah. But time flies when you're having fun, right? Oh, well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> At least some so, of it's been fun. Go. Well, yeah, you know. Yeah. But, you know, we've had those issues, which have been very, you know, enlightening. <laughs> <laughs> which is being nice to him. Don, you're so political. You should run for office. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don would be good in the office. The only thing I'll run for is my, never mind. I'll run for the toilet <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> um, but ladies and gentlemen, we are in the last segment of the show, so um, we are going to get back to these stories about truckers because we got a few more left, and I think we can polish up this article finally. There you go. Which would be, you know, I love this article, but, you know, after four or five shows, it's probably <laughs> good to get through it. It's getting a little stale. It's, yeah, it's aging a little bit. And and I love these trucker stories. I really do. I'd like to, uh, like to find a whole new batch of these because these are epic. They're right. really good. Right. Again, from roughmaps.com is the the site that's hosting this article. And I believe it's an aggregate from uh, from Reddit, but still very cool. Let's read number 46 on our list here. And this is the corner of your eye. I was driving through a national park in the middle of the night, going through some slow stretch. Every so often, I think I see something out of the window and beside me, just a glimpse of movement. When I look, though, I don't catch it. Finally, on about the third time, I whip my head around really fast, and this time I recognize it. It's a huge black wolf following alongside of my truck just off the highway. I only saw it for a few seconds before I had to focus back on the road, but... It was absolutely lovely, yet unsettling. Right. Yeah, there is that, that. In Yellowstone, they've got a, a one that's a huge wolf. I've seen a, a, a wolf documentary where they mention this one black wolf there. And I don't know if it's one and the same, but they did show this black wolf on, on the video, and it was amazingly beautiful, just this big, beautiful animal. Right. But it really, it really begs the question, are some of those... Um, some of those um, species actually is extinct. Uh, uh, in, in this case, the dire wolf, you know, are they right. really extinct? Yep. Because we have that video of the dog running out into the, the you know, just into the wood line yep. and then chasing that big black. That huge black wolf. wolf yeah. 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 And <clears throat> you got to ask the question, are they really extinct or are they just keyed in enough to know that they need to stay the hell away from us maybe i mean wolves are very intelligent it's well, yeah. um most people out here never see wolf right. and there are wolves all over all around there are, yeah. up here in uh, n the north of idaho but well you know and then uh there's the um like down in uh, uh australia the thylacine the the tasmanian yep, yep. the tazzy tiger the tasmanian tazzy tiger, tiger yep. right uh yeah so there you go yeah, and I, I think they, they could very well still be around. Or maybe, maybe uh, they're just, maybe they're inbred with the, the regular wolves now. And sure every enough. once in a while, one of the big ones pop up. and yeah, throws, throws a big one, yeah. Yep, it could be. But whatever they are, 
Um, that, I know the video you're talking about. The guy's walking the dog, and the dog just charges in there right. like he's going to tear it up. And then right. that, I mean, the wolf doesn't even touch this thing, but this dog, when it sees this thing get up and start charging, <laughs> because the wolf is laying there acting like it's being meek, and it's waiting for that, that dog to get close enough, and then all of a sudden it lunges. And it's, it's I, as a dog owner, I'd be terrified because it's like, no. And there's nothing. Screw the dog. Do. I'm out of here. Oh, huh. You know what I mean, though. Yeah, I hear. I hear you on that and that and too because it's like, damn, I'm gonna miss that dog. Would you like some barbecue sauce? I'll see you later. <laughs> I but miss- yeah, I, I think I don't think you know. And people are oh, we're finding new species all the time. Sure. No, actually, what we're doing is we're we may be finding extinct right. air quotes. You know. Sure. So I mean, perhaps they perhaps they've. They, they blend in with regular wolves better than, than well, we expect yeah. them to. Because sure. oftentimes when we're rebuilding fossils, we're doing it just based on some assumptions. <laughs> a whole lot of assumptions, because well, nobody saw one of these things yeah, alive. exactly. It's like, hey, do you want to turn yeah. around that hip bone for that T-Rex? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sally don't look like that no more. Say, you know that's backwards, that's, right? That's not a Sally, it's a Sal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Quit busting my chops. Um, but whatever the case, uh, you know, we just don't know what these things look like. I mean, how long dinosaurs were, right. you know, considered these bald things. And now there's a, a great, very strong argument for the fact that some of them, many of them probably had feathers. Feathers, yeah. yeah. Feathers, yeah. And so yeah. we didn't know that. So if a real dinosaur popped up, we'd be like, why is that big chicken running around? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I didn't know they had teeth. <laughs> 40 spots down the mile. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, here's the next one, Mountain Man. Mm. My friend was hauling logs in Idaho. What's up with Idaho lately? I don't know. Well, we're up in Idaho. Well, that's true. (laughs) Me? What's up in Idaho? Me? (laughs) Uh, My friend was hauling hauling logs in Idaho and was coming down during a snowy winter night. He was putting on chains before heading down a steep hill when he said all of the hair suddenly stood up on his body. It felt like there was something watching him. Mm. Halfway down the switchbacks, he saw a large figure standing on a 20-foot tall embankment. And as he got closer, it jumped down, uh, and the shoulders were as tall as his cab. Wow. Oh, my God, that's huge. In a single bound, it leaped down and then leaped over to the other side of the embankment. And at the time, he thought it was a Sasquatch, and now he says it was probably a demon trying to make him crash. No, I think it was probably right the first time. Uh, He didn't stop to remove the chains until he was well away from the mountain. Yeah, I don't blame him. That's got to be unsettling, just to see something so large. Right. That's just got to reset you. In yeah, so no, ways. A demon, no. You know, no. it's one of those one of those overused terms for something we don't understand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> I, you know, I and and it's, I don't know why people are insistent about that. I guess it's because they feel scared, and they're trying to rationalize that. Well, it must right. be a demon because I felt scared. Well, no, it just might be. That you saw an eight or nine foot tall thing jump down a twenty foot embankment right. with its shoulders at your cab level in a semi truck. I mean, those things are huge. Semi trucks are huge. It's like Trucky over in uh, in Australia yeah. telling us about his experience and that right. thing. He had to look up. He had to like <laughs> stoop down a little bit in his cab to look up he and see its head. About it, yeah. He was in a dump truck, you know. Yep. And he said the thing hammered his, his, his the hood of his car right. was like folded steel, right. and it made a huge dent. Um, so there's no doubt these yeah. things are enormous. That truck said Yowie. <laughs> That's where they got the name. <laughs> That's where it came from. <laughs> they cause Yowie. Yeah. So that was by Ishvalan Warrior, but very cool story. Ishvalan um, Warrior? Ishvalan. Uh, yeah, that's the second one from the same guy. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Another. I bet you, I bet you the, it was the other Hido one that he Oh, right, about right. Yeah. There okay. Go. He's got a few of them. Yeah. Good storyteller. Number 48, Shadow of Doubt. The company I drove for picks up cast iron pipe at a place not far out of town. Well, I've had to drive or pick up there several times after dark when no one else is there because it's a 24-hour place. And every time I've been there after dark, I can hear groaning sounds behind trailers and the sound of something tapping on the trailers. Mm -hmm. Uh, The second time I loaded there at night, I noticed the same thing, but this time there was a dark silhouette of somebody standing between two trailers while I was throwing straps. Mm -hmm. After that, I quit throwing straps at night if there were no other drivers hooking up. I also park in the street outside right under a street light and wait until daybreak. I don't know what it is. But and I'd rather not find out. That was by a rebel actual. Wow. 
Yeah, I don't know if you'd want to know what it is either, but if it's there every time, that's that's all kinds of wrong. Number 49, the mystery woman. My dad drove truck between Edinburgh and London and tells this story often. He was driving down the motorway and looked to his right only to see a woman with a severe bun staring at him with a terrified expression from a car next to him. I think we've heard yes, this story before. we've heard this one a million but, times. Yeah, it's been popped up on many lists. But and it's, we'll, been, it's been around the world now. Yeah. Before he really knows how to react, the car pulls off to the next exit. My dad, although shaken, carries on. About a half an hour later, a different car with a different driver pulls alongside my dad. When he looked over, his blood ran cold, and it was the same woman in the passenger seat with the same expression on her face. My dad thinks, screw this, and plans to pull into the next services to report it. Even if it's a misunderstanding, better to be safe than sorry, right? However, the car disappears before he can get any details, and he thinks there's no point calling the authorities with no details, so he carries on driving. Literally about four hours later, almost in London, yet another car pulls alongside him with the same woman, same hair, same terrified expression, except this time she appears to be screaming at my dad mm. through the window. So my dad pulls over and calls the authorities, and apparently they have received three other calls about the same woman in the same area in the last few minutes. He never heard anything more about it, and he didn't see her again, although he kept an eye on the news he also didn't see anything about it, and I think it really haunts him to this day. That was by Screw Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> <clears throat> Screw that. Yeah. Number 50, A Vengeful Ghost. My dad's a trucker, and about 20-some years ago, a woman took her own life by running out in front of him. Oh, that's horrible. He said that every night around that time, she passed the cab of his truck. Every night around that time, she passed... Oh, okay, around the time she passed. The cab of his truck would drop a few degrees in temperature, and he felt the presence. He said this went on for a few weeks until finally he spoke out to her and said he forgave her and wished she would have peace. Mm. He said he never experienced the eeriness again. That's just how I am, is who wrote that one. And I think that's a cool story because it just talks about that maybe his trauma was keeping that spirit there. And by him releasing it, that allowed her to transition. Maybe. Maybe it works that way, folks. We don't know. But I think it's an interesting correlation that he had to release it for it to quit happening. Right. So maybe his, his trauma from that experience was keeping her earthbound. Maybe. Number 51, it's coming from inside the car. My mom told me a story about one late night out trucking. Her husband was sleeping in the back, and she was starting to get super tired and struggling to stay awake. She heard another trucker on the CB radio and started chatting with him, and he helped her stay awake for the run until she stopped off at a truck stop until her husband took over. That next morning, she told her husband what happened, and his face went white as a sheet. He told her the CB was broken and that she couldn't have talked to anyone. It was impossible. Ooh. She talked to somebody. CB Jesus. <laughs> she met CB Jesus. You had to see that one come. I didn't. I mean, Oddly God. enough, I didn't. Oh, I should have. You're goodness. right, though. That was by Shadow oh, Orc Slayer. So, but good story. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings up the end of that article. Finally, we made it. Wow. We did, we did it, Don. Oh, my God, we did it. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. It's not, it hasn't been an article. It's oh, been a mini series. <laughs> yeah, actually. Kind of, I wonder if we just went back and like took all the pieces apart and put them all together in line and say, you know, trucker stories. 50, 51 trucker stories. I actually, I actually bought, uh, passed another article today that was trucker stories. And I was like, you know, I'll bet you it's probably a reprint of the one that I'm working on already. So maybe. I, I didn't even check it out. But maybe, maybe it is. But what a cool story. I didn't realize I never even put it on screen. But. I don't know. If you like to read along with me, I'm sorry I forgot that. How are you guys doing? You guys doing good? Hey, uh, uh, hey. I wish I could do a shout out. God, you, I, not ha I hate how not having my laptop. Well, let's see who's here. You, <laughs> want, you want a shout out from my screen? Uh, no, I can barely read it. All right. Well, there's only a few names showing up because apparently not everybody's chatting. Yeah, well. Yeah, if you want a shout out, you got to talk. You, you got to talk. You got to say shit. You got to talk. But I'll, sell you, I'll tell you the names that are here right I'll now. I'll tell you the names. You'll say you'll sell them. Uh, that's what I almost said. Um, and Android Purity's here. Brooks is here. Elaine Clifford. J.G. Hartwell 
is here. Karen Alberding, yep. Maggie M10, Rachel gets it right, Ruger Ridge, Tracy Gale, and of course the Aether Archives. That be that guy, Mister Longbeard himself. Kirk, Kirk Robinson is here. Kirk Robinson, yeah, he uh, just popped see. up on my list too. Yep. Um, Very cool. Anybody else? else? Did you get Ruger Ridge? Did yeah, I did. Rick? Yep. Okay. Jeffrey Dixon just popped up. Uh, Farm was here a little bit ago. Yes, he was. Tracy and Gale. Portal Mom's out there. She just got her chat all screwed up, so uh, she doesn't know what to do. Digger Dog was here. Er, Digger is here Dog. Right okay, very cool. Uh, let's see here. Okay, you got Karen. <laughs> uh, thanks again to uh, Eric Spinner with Squatch Talks uh, Podcast. Yeah, that was really cool. The High Tides here. The high Tides, very cool. Yep. Uh, bu- 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 and that's as far as I can go back. All right, well. And if you wanted to shout out, you missed it. You but, missed it. But that's okay, because we'll uh, keep you in our hearts. <laughs> I don't even know what that means for sure, but it sounded good. <laughs> sounded kind of poetic. <laughs> um, the next article I want to talk about is with the last 10 minutes. This is, I don't know, this probably isn't too, well, this is kind of big, isn't it? Maybe I'll save this for another show, because it's going to take too long to get through. I'm looking for my next thing to go through here it was something with this here it is um this is from gaia.com and that of course is the the website that is the sister to the the network of course that you can get gaia you can get a subscription to and watch a whole host of really fascinating shows i don't have the subscription but i've caught enough of their episodes to know that if i had more free time i would actually invest in it because it's very interesting stuff and uh you can get a lot of great um stories uh, right up our wheelhouse actually right in our wheel not up our wheelhouse <laughs> right in our wheelhouse wow i know you almost had to expect that didn't you yeah, uh, kind of a couple of those fails every every, every night every night oh. but this is fascinating secrets of crop circles decoded and it says crop circles you see them in the air from pla- see them from in the air from planes in the movies and perhaps even firsthand Many consider crop circles to have been created by extraterrestrials who yearn to subtly communicate with our species. Others view them as an agricultural and technological artistic phenomena and believe the alien connection may be a hoax. But no matter which crop they're carved from, these intricate geometric patterns hold messages waiting to be decoded. Whether you believe in crop circles or alien manifestations or farmers with a creative bent and lots of time on their hands, the history and mystery surrounding crop circles have been around since the mid-1600s. I did not know that. Both are organs of perception and the phenomenal world uh, we perceive seems to be best understood as systems of pure pattern or as geometric structures of form and proportion. That was by Robert Lawler regarding sacred geometry. Crop circles, messages, locations, and history. The first crop of circles to be recorded dates back to 1678 with a woodcut Mm -hmm. illustrating a circle being cut from an old field. Mm -hmm. The woodcut refers to a legend known as devil's mowing, feeding into the myth that crop circles are the work of otherworldly and darker influences. The connection can be made with the scythe, a common agricultural tool that might symbolize the end or death of an agrarian system cycle. In 1966, a crop circle was discovered in Tully, Australia. That is one of the first to be connected to UFOs. The farmer who found the pattern reported seeing a flying saucer rising out of the area, creating what the media referred to as a flying saucer nests. More circles began appearing in the United Kingdom in the 70s, with most congregating in the Wiltshire area, the same region as many other ancient monuments. One in particular discovered in 1996 across from the legendary Stonehenge had a design known as the Julia set, a very complicated fractal configuration that led many to believe it was created by extraterrestrials sending a message through sacred geometry such as the Celtic cross, Triskelion, and other intricate shapes that dot the land in more than 60 countries. Researchers believe that there are certain years in which crop circles appear more frequently and perhaps with more urgency. The tetrahedron pictogram, which appeared at the location of the Barbary Castle in 1991, made many wonder if these creations were more than meteorological phenomena. Some took them as elaborate hoaxes by very talented tractor drivers, and others saw ancient hermetic messages in the design signifying the Holy Trinity and the realm of the divine. As much attention on the Barbary Castle crop circle gained, 
which garnered the most attention f- uh, from the world in 2001. Six, the six-arm, 490-wheeled circle, more than 800 feet in diameter, discovered in Milk Hill, England, became an overnight sensation for weeks. Helicopters hovered above it, and the result was the fact that the mystery surrounding crop circles could no longer be ignored. There exists a line drawn in the world of crop circles, those who adhere to them being man-made and those who hold that the patterns being with the work of extraterrestrials. For the hoaxer side of the argument, the areas, uh, the areas the crop circles appear in are often nestled in remote, very expanses of land, which would make it fairly easy to arrive in the middle of the night with little or no notice. And for those who believe the circles were made by aliens, the methods by which they were created range from lasers to advanced light wave technology to spacecraft or even psychic energy. In an effort to decode crop circles, a body of research has emerged, Dr. Horace Drew, a well-regarded molecular biologist from the California Institute of Technology, led these investigations and provided crop circle decoding that concludes the patterns contain important messages from other species. While Dr. Drew does uh, agree that many crop circles are human-made, he also states that those created by extraterrestrials contain an advanced binary code, either in the form of a simple greeting, greeting or as a means of communication with future civilizations. Some of the messages Dr. Drew decoded include such sayings as believe, there is good out there, beware the bearers of false gifts and broken promises, and we oppose deception, all leading us to believe that the alien communication is intended for us to live our, our best lives. So the, the Chil- Chilbolton, Bolton? Chilbolton crop circle discovered in 2001 contains binary code of the numbers 0 to 10, uh, atomic numbers and makeup of human DNA and a f- human face, the solar system, and other human-related symbols. The, uh, in addition to studying the visual messages that are within crop circles, there is a body of sound and light vibration research that has emerged around the patterns. In 1960s, Gerald Hawkins, former Boston University School of Astronomy chair, applied crop circle geometry to the Boeotian scale, 500 AD, and with it, a way of creating music, adding the accepted belief of the relationship between geometry and sound. More recent research by quantum physicists is revealing a wide range of electromagnetic frequency fields ranging from 260 megahertz to 5.2 kilohertz that links the geometric patterning using image-to-sound mapping technology. Interesting correlations have been found between the Mill Kill crop circle and sounds heard on other planets, including those recorded on Saturn's auroras by NASA's Cassini spacecraft. That's interesting. Um, the crop circles are not going away, regardless of the doubters and the controversy surrounding them. In fact, new ones are cropping up bump, every month, with the latest being photographed as recently as Early June, uh, early July 2019. A substantial tourist industry has developed around the circles with thousands of visitors from around the globe gathering to witness them firsthand. Some visit out of curiosity and some visit to experience the healing messages the crop circles are believed to contain. Whether one believes crop circles are the work of farmers, geometric pranksters, or aliens, it can be agreed upon that the power they possess draws us back to the land and to the very ancient history contained there, as well as what our ancestors consider to be vital to the human experience, a respect for divine mystery. That was written by Lisa Trank, and uh, it's very interesting. Sounds like she did a lot of research here. It is, it is interesting. Now, but the thing is, though, is, you know, you get these really complicated, really, you know, uh, uh, intense um, um, geometrical patterns going on out there and mm-hmm. it would take people hours to do these things. hours and hours and hours because yeah. they're just so huge and they're so big and so intricate yeah you know um yeah okay so you can explain some away with you know kids out there with boards with rope and you know stomping down and right you know but when you're when you're examining it at a, at a smaller level like the nodes that burst from the inside out because of, of radiation or you know, microwaves, microwaves yep. you know, whatever, mm-hmm. um, turning, basically turning it into popcorn. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it boggles the mind as to how, a, uh, how a person could do that, right. you know, with a board and a stick and like five hours, yeah. you know, yeah. um, you know, but then again, you know, turn around and say, you know, these, some of these are like 
huge. They're like, what, what was that one? It was 800 feet. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so. It's just huge. That's and enormous. They're perfect circles. Yeah. And, and everything Concentric is perfect. Concentric circles as well. Yeah. Like inside of circles, inside of circles, like and a record. Right. With and binary. So, like the one that's on the screen right now. You know, that's exactly what, you know, that looks like a record. Right. It looks like, you know, a music box. And that's exactly what it looks like. How would a kid be able to put that together? I don't and know. And actually have it make sense. It would take incredible teamwork and coordination and planning yeah. to an unbelievable degree, that time that should be better served doing their, their schoolwork homework. probably. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, it's time. It's time, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for us. Thank you for joining us. And remember, Deb Varner joins us tomorrow night here on the portal. So if you want a psychic reading, come on, tune in, and kick back with us tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on YouTube or TFR, wherever you're listening. But... We love you all. Be good, be kind, be nice. Take care of each other. Help each other out. Find the magic in every day. And remember to laugh as much as you can. Good night, everybody. Good night. Children born to parents.